Uh, most people might know of the TTM squeeze related to John Carter. He's the uh, CEO of uh, Simple Trading, um, one of the best uh, risk takers, tra option traders. Those, um, but he obviously has a huge account. But uh, it's not the 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 code wasn't developed by him, and I don't know why it's even referenced by him. But uh, even on uh, Tasty Trades, Tasty Works, uh, he's been on uh, interview. Uh, interviewed on that channel and he's can't he's come out and said that that's not his his indicator he has not developed it just for your information but it is an indicator that he uses very frequently it is the indicator that a lot of uh, traders use uh, and it's uh, founded on based on the uh, volatility uh, between the two um, indicators of between the Keltner channel and the Bollinger Band and that's basically all you need to know because if you get into the minutia of w w the details and the mathematics behind it, uh, it doesn't serve you too much. Um, doesn't it won't increase your return on your investment, but it'll give you some additional insight. But um, long term wise, it's it's better just to trade the markets. Hence, it's called a TTM, trade the markets, uh, rather than to understand how the indicators work. So <clears throat> for instance here, uh, what I want to do is I want to just probably plot the S&P futures. Actually, it's a little bit messy here. Let's do the SPX. And you can see I have the SPX uh, chart here, the S&P 500 index. This is the cash. So this is a futures options ticker, okay? It's a, so there's there's some nuances between uh, the S and P. There's the S and P futures. That's what we call the FUTs, forward slash ES. And then we have the uh, SPY ETF. So that's um, an electronic traded fund. And then we have the SPX. That's the uh, cash session fund. And that's um, <clears throat> that's a <clears throat> totally different beast. So for futures, uh, if you're into trading futures, we have uh, the forward slash ES, and they came up with a new instrument called micro futures. And that one requires you to have a margin account, okay? Uh, the next one is the SPX, that's called futures options. And that requires you, does not require you to have a margin unless you're selling, but uh, it, it, is a, it is a futures option. So that's classified as future options. And then the ETF itself, uh, SPY, that's, um, you can trade that common shares and uh, options. And you can sell and buy. You can write them, you can sell them, you can do whatever you want. But uh, right now what we're looking at here is the SPX uh, 500 index. And what I wanna do is start, uh, just go to the top right-hand corner. And if uh, you type in TTM squeeze, or TTM, you can see that there's a whole bunch of uh, TTMs and we want to insert the TTM squeeze right here. And then add that and add the TTM wave and probably add about three of those. So once you add those <coughs> into your into your workspace, uh, you can see that you get the, um, the default setting for TTM squeeze at the top. Uh, and then you can see these red histograms Okay, and the yellow histogram with the cyan histogram and the dark blue histogram rotating or oscillating around the green dots, which is your zero line. Okay, now this these TTM squeezes this this represents uh, momentum and acceleration based on the projection of uh, each of the histograms prior to. And what you want to notice is uh, first recognize that obviously if it's red, it's a, if it's a red histogram, uh, that's a momentum bar that's being displayed here that's negative. Uh, so if, if you took, take a look at the time in sales and you turn that on, uh, there's nothing being populated right now. But if we turn on the futures, you can probably see some volume being generated uh, with respect to time, okay. So if you're if you know anything about physics or even the basics <clears throat> of you know the first law, uh, the Newton's first law, then you would know that there's like a formula called the force equals mass times acceleration. Now for the markets, 
that formula, mass time acceleration, requires uh, time components. So that's the time right there. And the, the mass is your uh, volume. So that's the size, okay? Size of the price and the quantity. And that's going to give you the force. And that force, if you, do, if you rearrange the formula a little bit, add a couple of variables, you can come up with a, uh, a momentum. And that momentum is represented by, based on these histograms. So if there's a huge volume size order uh, and the price starts to accelerate, then the histogram prior to would increase, would move position higher than the previous one, right? So if you take a look, um, the S&P has been, the histogram has been increasing uh, steadily over a period of days. Okay, so all these histograms represent is uh, momentum. And then the color uh, would give you an idea of the, uh, based on the negative or positive gradients, represents the selling or the buying um, rate. Okay, so if the selling um, is larger than the buying, then uh, at one point you'll see that the histogram turns red. And then if the selling starts to abate, um, reduce in speed, then the histogram will turn red to yellow, uh, indicating a, a point where, a pivot point. And then if it crosses zero, then obviously the buyers are taking over, and then you get the histogram to also change color, coming now above the zero line, okay? So then now buyers are in control, and you would just have to, um, and then you would just see the histogram change from a position that was negative that was under the green dot now being above the green dot now the green dots just represent a a period a unit of time depending on which time frame you're using so right now uh, what we're doing here is we're watching the s p futures on the daily time frame and we use <coughs> uh, a term called a6 so these are all basically pseudo algorithms and that A6 refers to a daily time frame uh, unit. So each one of these green dots represents a cycle for that time. So when you're trading options, there's so many things you can trade uh, based on contracts, date of expiration, timing. All these things have to be considered when you're an option trader. But um, one thing that needs to be unified is the, your the way that you kind of count your cycles which means that you're if you have the ability to shift through time frames you have to understand that cycles don't care which time frame you're in as long as you're counting them okay so here we have um, basically the ttm squeeze that's the default setting that's available in most platforms and that's basically a bollinger band and a kelner channel and that red dot there is basically provides you with an idea of the volatility um, if it's low or high. So red dots imply that there's low volatility. And then when it goes into a, a cycle that's represented by the first green dot after the red green dot, that would indicate the first cycle. So anything, any cycle after that, like before the red dots, that's a, that's a unit of a cycle if there was a prior red dot. So back here, when, there, when the S&P was in an A6, scanning with those red dots, and when it did enter its first cycle, you can see that the trend in the histogram, the momentum started to build for about an average of, I think it was about 14 days before it hit a new 52 week high and then sold off uh, pretty hard back in uh, June. Okay, and then we get another A6 right here, and it sold off into two cycles, and then quickly reversed going into earnings, and then now we're back in another A6 scanning, and now we might be in another position where it continues to move higher and possibly fill that gap here at 3,329. Yeah, time cycle one represents the first green dot after the red after the last red dot 
So that's the that's the trick in multi time frame analysis. Multi time frame analysis, you need to know which time frame you're trading on. Is it a one minute, five minute, thirty minute, daily, weekly, monthly? We don't care about. Uh, we we don't we actually we do care about the time frame, but we need to be cognizant that if I'm trading a lotto, right, and the contract's going to expire on Friday, in in five days, I'm not looking to use a monthly time frame to make that decision to whether to load up on some contracts that are going to expire this week on Friday because I'm looking at a monthly time frame. And the average period <clears throat> on a monthly time frame would require somebody to buy contracts for at least minimum three months out to um, maybe even 1.5 years. So if you're looking for something short term, you got to reduce your time frame and then understand your cycles. And the cycles are the most important part, which means that, um, you know, I always tell people that the stock market or trading options is very, very similar to trading um uh, the sport baseball. Okay, baseball is one of the most intensive stat type of sports uh, known to to man. It's very very stat. Um, there's a lot of stats behind baseball, and um, but the rules are the same. You know, three three strikes you're out, four balls you walk, and the TTM squeeze. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, it actually follows uh, a baseball approach, which makes me believe that some of the people that are in the markets probably love playing baseball and trading at the same time. But uh, yeah, time cycle one is the is the first green dot after the red dot. Okay, so that's important. So it doesn't matter if I show you a red dot and that's a green dot that follows it. It doesn't matter. You don't know if it's a daily unit, daily cycle. You don't know if it's a 78 minute cycle. You don't know if it's a five minute cycle. All we know, it's one cycle. And that is very, very important to understand when you're trading options. Because once you hit two, once you hit the second or third cycle, uh, you're probably, you could be up most of the time about 100 to 50%. And you need to know what to do to manage your risk going into the fourth and fifth cycle, knowing that the, the longest cycle maximum cycle that a position can continue moving higher depending on the setup can be up to about 14 days okay so it's kind of like <clears throat> it's kind of like these um this sports player that you you've you've kind of followed all your life and you know every single stat behind this player and you you say okay you know the best you know when this when this player is playing um, against this team during this month, he's always got this you know specific record where it just keeps on running. You know, beats some, you know, scores 14 goals, 14 points in, you know, 35 minutes or 78 minutes. <clears throat> okay, but it doesn't happen all the time, right? Like, you, it's just you can you can make a, um, a comparison that this indicator, this TTM squeeze, is a it's kind of like your favorite sports team when they're when they're playing against one of the worst teams ever, or how a player is you know performed when they always play against the same team over again, um, which is kind of like seasonality. That's how you kind of approach this, okay? And then you have to sometimes they're not going to always repeat, or when that 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 um, against that team, or maybe the the player is sick that day. For whatever reason, it could be it could be interest rate increase, it could be Fed talks, it could be you know coronavirus wave three four five who knows but um or it could be earnings period it could be whatever it is but um or it could be september 9 11 it could be um quad witching it could be january effect it could be halloween whatever it may be the schedule is always uh going to be there for you to kind of look in in the past and see how past performance is going to influence your future decisions in trading. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the TTM squeeze default setting. That's so you got the cyan color representing histograms of positive momentum, and then <clears throat> once the momentum uh, reduces, then the 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 momentum starts to uh, change from cyan to dark blue, and that dark blue either means that the mom means that the momentum has uh, slowly faded, and a, and then you're in a position where it, there's a continuation rally or a possible pullback 
uh, or profit taking or a complete reversal. Okay, so here you can see as the S and P moved higher, I think that J Powell, J Powell comes out and destroys the market, drops the market five percent, but it doesn't go any lower, makes a higher, makes a low, and then a higher low after the the red histogram back here. So just based on price action from a daily candle perspective, you can see that when the market started selling off here, it didn't wasn't successful making the lower low. It made a higher low, and now we have this objective where we're trying to fill that gap. 3,322 before any market crash starts to become a big issue in the future. Okay, so then, uh, let's see. So this, why do you have three? Yeah, so I'm gonna get to that right now. So the first part is just to talk about the, um, the default setting of the TTM squeeze. And keep in mind, you can always to improve your understanding of the, the momentum histograms. You can always add my, the, 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 mo the most popular indicator, the volume average, which I call the, um, the, uh, the back rat indicator uh, to give you an idea of the selling and buying. So there's the there's the average volume at 1.83 million, and then there's the uh, green histogram volume bar and the red histogram. So the red histogram volume bar that happened on July 17th was a lot lower than the average, and then so that's not a really big concern. And then the next one on Friday was green, so we'll see what happens on Monday. Now going back to the question that Michael Mee is asking. Why do I have three of the same versions of the TTM wave? And that's because this formulation of the TTM wave ha is specific, is, is, um, has a different look back period. So if you double click on this TTM squeeze indicator, you can look at all the different um, settings, so default settings. And a general rule in, in any development, especially if a developer has created some sort of code, and then, um, and then somebody else inherits it. It's always it's always a good practice to use the default settings uh, as your reference. So you don't want to be touching these things at all, the default settings. Okay, unless you are very very confident that you've identified a specific setting for a specific ticker. This th these default settings is used for the general markets, and if you change it then you're going to be in a world of trouble because it's not going to make any sense. The stats will be all wrong. But the reason why I have three of them is because all three TTM waves have a different formula behind it that gives a bit of an edge to those who are trading options. So the first one right here underneath the TTM default setting, uh, that's the TTM wave. When you double click on it, you can see that there's wave one, wave two, wave two low, and zero line. And some, some traders kind of like to, we have to use analogies in, in trading to get the information uh, between each trader as fast and, um, and effectively. And these waves are kind of, you probably heard a lot of analogies about surfing. I don't surf, I almost killed myself surfing. But um, definitely waves are um, an integral part of uh, trading because they come in, in, big, in big cycles. And the first cycle, the first wave uh, right here that's indicated underneath plots, uh, that's a wave that's looking, that has a different look back period than the default setting in the TTM squeeze. So what you wanna do here, and that's re represented by the yellow and the maroon, so gain and loss. What you wanna do to isolate that is just remove the wave too high and the wave too low by just clicking on wave too high and then uncheck the show plot and apply. And then likewise, you want to do that for the wave too low. So check, click on that, uncheck the show plot, and apply. And once you do that, you can see you have uh, a very um, simple uh, illustration of the wave one TTM histogram being displayed directly underneath the uh, TTM squeeze. And the significance of having this is that this is a faster look back period. It gives you an idea of what the um, the lower periods are doing in terms of so the the, the default setting for TTM squeeze is a, has a look back period of 20 days, 
whereas the TTM wave, wave one, has a look back period of approximately three to six. They don't give me the code in TTM at, at TD Ameritrade, and I don't have it, but I believe it's around three to six. Okay, so when you see the waves, uh, the histogram for wave one being yellow, that's you know that's a lot of buying that's being done here. So that gives you acceleration. So you can think of wave one as your accelerator. So if someone's pressing the gas on in your car, uh, and you get a histogram that's uh, yellow and above the zero line, that means the acceleration and positive buying pressure is on. And then you can see that it turns uh, to a different color, a maroon color, when the accelerator is um, kind of reduced. And that's what these histograms represent. These are all momentum bars. Okay, so remember, each of these histograms that's in the TTM squeeze or any of these waves below represents price, size, and time. Okay, so if the if the size and the price start to accelerate, then the next histogram is going to print a little higher uh, above the prior. So that's the first thing that you want to do. And then the second thing you want to do is uh, go to the one below the TTM wave one. Double click on that, and then what you want to do here is turn off the wave one, keep the wave two high on, and wave two low off. And now you got wave two. Okay, so wave two is, you can see that the longer term trend for the TTM squeeze or the general market looks very bullish because you can see that wave two um, has a very um, positive momentum strong momentum, strong buying behind that. And you don't want to be shorting uh, too aggressively in a market that looks, that has a wave pattern like that. So that's a big, big wave, kind of like that movie in Inception where that wave is coming from afar and it's taking how many, how long does it take? It doesn't take too long, but it's there and they can see it. And that's the wave that, um, that, is, that we're currently in. And then finally for the last wave, we're gonna isolate the wave three. And I'm gonna turn off wave one, turn off wave two, and then keep wave three on, okay? And when you do that, you can see that um, they look, it looks identical to wave two, but it's still different because it's got a different look back period. Okay, so when you get these waves all set up and you're saying, okay, the market's gonna crash and you look at wave two and you, when you look at wave three, you're, you're definitely not, if somebody's telling you, if you read all those uh, people on Twitter and they're probably saying that this market doesn't make any sense, the market should be crashing. Um, yeah, we don't really care about their opinions because everybody has their own opinion, right? They can be some people like to drive Beamers, some people like to buy Teslas, Benz, Audis, whatever it is. Nobody cares about their opinion as long as it gets you from point A to point B. For me, I prefer having someone drive me around or pick me up or taking an Uber. Uh, I do like driving cars, but you know the liability is also there too, right? And I don't get too much pleasure out of driving anymore. Okay, so that's the TTM wave setup. And then when you, um, and this is one setup that you would like to, that you should be using um, on any of your time frames, okay? And then all you gotta do is remember that uh, the cycles, okay, if you take a look at day, which day was it, day seven, under the learning curves directory, we have a day seven TTM squeeze back tested results. I've already back tested for you that the average period is around three to four days and the maximum run could be up to 16 days. So we're only, if you take a look at the TTM squeeze default setting, you can see that we're on the fourth cycle today. We're gonna to enter the fifth. And then when you take a look at the calendar, um, uh, it does look kind of bullish for Monday. Tuesday could be a little bit tricky. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the basic TTM wave uh, analysis setup. 
uh, whatever you want to put in the upper chart, like six day moving average, 21 day moving average, that's totally up to you. Uh, there is a learning curve section, I think is day, uh, day 10. So that's the foundation you can, uh, in that, in, in that PDF, you can, uh, plot, it shows you how to plot the six, eight and 21 day moving average using the ATR trailing stop, um, as a as a guide to as a guide to um, understanding your um, mental stop loss okay so that's about it for now and using this workspace when you position size uh, is is also key because it's just not just following this workspace is not going to make you millions and millions of dollars you have to kind of uh, understand the cycles look for your setups and when the market starts running uh, there will be a time where you do risk a little bit more but what you want to do you know at the very beginning of your trading journey is to build enough profits so that when the market when you do see a setup and you want to take it you're just using profits and not um, your hard-earned cash the hard-earned cash you have to be a little bit more diligent in finding the right setups okay we got a question here about uh, so does that answer your question Michael me TTM, why we have three of them. So we isolate and look at different periods, look back periods relative to our reference uh, TTM squeeze indicator. So the TTM squeeze is looking very bullish. And then if we look at the wave two and three, those both look bullish. And wave one uh, looks a little bit, looks bullish as well, but we wanna see these, we wanna see the momentum start picking up. So the histograms are, really low at 9.3 and if the market gets really bullish we can we can see hit the histograms for wave one to reach up to almost 120. All right so right now we're at nine okay so the next question is hi roger what is the study for the volume bars so that's called the volume average that's also a default remember any indicator that you need in thinkorswim uh, is basically all you need. Anything else you buy is just uh, an enhancement, making different colors. Maybe they find they could do a study that oh maybe if we change the RSI indicator to uh, purple and pink, we can increase our sales by twenty percent, and you know that could be a revenue of about you know a hundred thousand dollars. Indicators are all the same. Okay, it's the back testing that's not the same. Indicators are not back tested unless you have extensively done some research on a specific indicator for a specific ticker uh, for specific months of the year. Um, that indicators are just indicators and they just help you identify a higher low or a lower low so that you can take on risk uh, using discretionary approach. Whereas uh, back when you, whereas algorithms, uh, these are different. They're actually back tested. And we're assuming that past performance is indicative of future performance. So whenever you go into a webinar and somebody says, hey, future past performance is not indicative of future performance, you have to be aware of that. Uh, I am on the opposite side. I think that it is indicative of future performance because the market is created by humans and all humans do is repeat history. Okay. The only thing you cannot predict is when the next earthquake is coming, when is the next tornado coming, when is all these these natural disasters coming? That's designed by Mother Nature. Okay, I even think based on the number, based on the number, the the Boeing when it crashed the Nigerian plane, that happened at a fifty-two week high. It almost even by based on the numbers and the analysis, that that airplane crashing was priced in. Unfortunately, I didn't want to. I don't want to say that. But it was very, very weird to see that mark, that plane crash when uh, Boeing was making a 52 week high. So all of those were back. All of those were designed by humans. OK, so that's it. Let's go to the market update. OK, so let's put on the daily moving average SMA. And I'll use the six. So in a, in a community like where we're in right now, we kind of have to use the same indicators. 
to when so whenever we plot something and we show it in the room or especially if you show it to me then it doesn't take me too much effort to ask you what the hell does that line represent because i'll know but based on the colors that that that's the eight day moving average and that's the six day moving average that's the 21 that's the 50 and that's the 200. so it saves time and gets that gets you the answer faster so just just for your information if i'm just using the default and just plotting the um, the moving averages and the colors that I generally use. So the 50 day moving average and which is white and then the 200 day moving average which is red. Okay, so let's let's <clears throat> look at the SPX. So um, one thing that you might want to remember here is that um, so right now you can see the SPX uh, 500 index on the daily time frame, and it had a one dot TTM squeeze, and it's, it's what one two three four five six cycles and we can see that there's some interesting daily candles so we got like almost like a interesting dojis here which are very very important uh, but it's trading above the six day moving average so the trend is still intact and you don't know from now till next week before j Powell, we could see the s p trading right to 3300 right all the way up to That would be how many point gain is that? So from here to the 18th, right about here, that would be about 2.23% move in 16 days. Okay, because the trend is still trading, the, the SPX is still trading above the six day moving average. <clears throat> And all the moving averages are stacked, meaning that the six is above the eight, the eight above the 21, the 50 is above the 200, and, and so on. So the breakout for the S&P, because Friday was super choppy, unbelievably choppy, there is a breakout level from the last, 50, from the last high that it made back here in June 8th. So if it breaks out above that, level then uh, you got that three thousand three hundred dollar gap and a possible attempt for the s p to make a new 52 week high so you can see that gap from a mile away so that that uh gap is right here uh, approximately so that wherever that gray shaded area is the s p is trying to go ahead and fill that gap because that gap has to get filled and uh, when it create when they created that gap back here in <clears throat> February, that was the uh, first. I guess that was a very strong enough gap for the momentum to really shift um, the bear, the bulls to a bear, and then the market proceeded to sell off uh, into one of the most deepest corrections ever. And believe me or not, I had almost seventeen, more than eighteen people contact me about these retirement accounts telling me that their 401k has dropped down about 30 percent and i said that's life that's what that's how the americans that's how the american market's gonna uh, treat you because this is this is a long-term game and you need to either manage your own risk or just not even worry about it because you're not looking to pull out any of your 401k until you know you retire but that's the gap we're looking at three thousand to be exact it's um, the gap will start at three thousand two hundred fifty nine point eight one. Right now, the SPX is trading at three thousand two hundred twenty four point seven three. So that's just a matter of one percent before it starts to uh, reach out and fill that gap. And and I told you, all gaps get filled. 
no matter what. Okay, futures, not not stocks, because stocks is stocks are um, the underwriters of the stocks. Was so when a company goes IPO, they approach a firm like Goldman Sachs or whatever, and those those companies, the underwriters, will be responsible for scamming the market, um, you know, and creating a lot of liquidity or you know widening out the spreads or whatever they need to do to generate commissions for the brokerages. Even though there's no more commissions, um, the commission schedules have been removed, there's still basic charges that are um, that are applied on the exchanges. But data is more important. So regardless of the commissions, there seems to be a lot more uh, profits in selling the data to um, firms rather than making money off the commission. So that's why the commissions, the commission schedule have been removed because if somebody smart enough was figured out that selling the data is more valuable than making money on the commissions. So that's, that's the whole premise of that. But here you can see that the S&P has that gap and in order for the market to crash, that gap plus a 52 week high um, the gap has to be filled first and then a 52 week high and we don't know how much higher this thing can go so we don't want to short it on the first 52 week high so if you use the TTM linear regression curve LRC and plot that you can use a very simple projection uh, to kind of estimate the path of least resistance and what this LRC LRC stands for linear regression curve so it's not a curve, well, it's a straight line, but a straight line as a curve uh, is showing the path of least, re least resistance is up. Okay, so you don't want to be shorting this market unless there's bad news. Okay, so the 52 week high is at 3,393.52, and until it breaks out and makes a new 52 week high. Uh, all possibility of a market crash anytime um, this year uh, is going to be kind of out of the question until it makes a 52 week high. So everyone will be kind of safe for now, uh, maybe all the way up until November 3rd. November 3rd, there could be a crash, like a mini crash. But you just have to be careful that uh, shorting the market right now when there's this gap uh, is not uh, the greatest uh, thing to do at the moment uh, okay all right so let's take a look at some of the positions we're in so let's start off with uh, our beloved uh, Baba uh, Baba so Baba I got in uh, some of the, the most of my positions that I, I'm in are drawing down but those are drawdowns on my profits and um, I got into some positions aggressively going into Friday uh, because the calendar, as you can see, uh, is bullish on for Monday with a 72%. The calendar has been generally, generally correct. However, it's been quite choppy. And one of the main reasons it's been chopping is because the market is trying to figure out if it's going to fill that gap uh, this week or the week after. But uh, I have Baba. And uh, Baba has a double D, double doji, and it's trading under the 60 moving average. But uh, I think it's going to have another uh, attempt to retest that 268 this week and then pull back and take off again to make uh, gravitate toward that 283, which is the 1272, and then possibly move up to 302, which is a psychological round number that generally most stocks tend to gravitate toward. Um, when they get closer and closer to it. So 246 is the current price for 247 is the current price for Alibaba and uh, If it gets above 268, then we know that 283 to 300 uh, is likely to reach um, As it runs into earnings uh, August 8, 13th the problem with Alibaba is Jay Powell Jay Powell as you can see on the calendar He's gonna be speaking on uh, July 29th so markets are going to be generally bullish from uh, the 20th all the way up until the 28th, which means that we have one more TGIF cycle, which is uh, good. It uh, doesn't look too bullish on the 27th and 28th, still 49%. But things can change depending on the uh, market internals. But 
before Jay Powell announces, the uh, market's probably going to do a little bit of a run into it and then a dump on the 29th or 30th. That's the week I don't particularly want to be trading because, as most people know, uh, Fed week is a very difficult week. I would wait until August 1st and uh, to look back to get into some positions. The August calendar will be released uh, this <clears throat> this Saturday on July 25th, and I have some good news. Uh, the Monte Carlo process, that's the simulation I use to predict the probabilities of the market being bullish or bearish, is showing a very, very high probability of loading up on um, August 17th. So if you're looking to make a shitload of money, get make sure you, the options you have to remember, uh, there are some losses along with the wins, but we have to win more often than losses. And one way to control your losses is to make sure that you're using position size properly. When you do get aggressive, you're getting aggressive with profits, not with your original position. When you get aggressive, okay, you have to have the odds in your favor. And one, the Monte Carlo simulation that I've uh, already processed is showing a very, very strong bullish week. Uh, starting August 17th. So if you're looking to make some pretty big gains, August 17th, more specifically, August 14th, TJF, uh, is likely to be a very, very highly profitable week before the market starts to turn. And then again, we do have uh, quad witching coming up again sometime later in the month, later in the year. Uh, where, we'll, where we will, again, place some trades in Apple and make some fantastic gains on that. But anyways, that's um, just giving some heads up. Uh, Jay Powell will mess things up in the last week. Uh, and then after the all the earnings are done with the FANG stocks, the market could be in a little bit um, in a vulnerable position. But keep in mind, after August, uh, we're looking to take some aggressive positions going into August 14th. Okay, the next one is from Alibaba. We just subtract two B, uh, letters, BA to BA. And uh, B, Boeing is was one of my largest positions, but I closed off half last week. The current positions I'm in right now are drawing down quite a bit, uh, but we'll see what happens when it, when it uh, for this week. Uh, Boeing is trading under the 60 moving average, and it does not look like it's in a trend anymore. I thought it was in a trend back here, when it hit off that 78 minute TTM squeeze. But we'll see how Monday and Tuesday plays out before I make any decision to close off the rest of my contracts. I have about 120 contracts left. Closed off 130 last week uh, at $2. And now I'm just holding off, holding on to the rest. Next ticker is Roku. Uh, Roku is trading under the 6 and slightly under the 8. Uh, it did trigger TJF, uh, and Roku has earnings uh, in August. We'll see what happens with Roku Monday and Tuesday, but Roku is one of the uh, top performing TJF tickers next to Tesla and NVIDIA and Apple. However, um, Roku is uh, Roku has that earnings potential and we'll see what happens on Monday and Tuesday. My executive decision to close Roku will be on Tuesday. The next ticker is Google. So Google $1,800 calls went up as high as $13. I did not manage my position. Unfortunately, I am holding. But we do have this very interesting BLT setup. So that's a doji. And we'll see what happens on Tuesday. TJF did trigger for Google. And the next ticker is NVIDIA. So NVIDIA does have a doji-like BLT setup, a little bit complicated because it's a little it's a red candle. But NVIDIA is as no matter how much the market was choppy, 
Nvidia was still holding on to its gains and it is if it does move on Tuesday it will move approximately so that's a complicated BLT complicated in the sense that the the, the lettuce is red and we're looking for a target of 420 by tomorrow by tomorrow Tuesday so I'll set the target Nvidia 420. Okay, so if you're interested in the BLT, so you just type in BLT. Oops. So the BLT right there is kind of like what I just plotted right here, right? So that's the green candle, that's the bacon. So if you're able to catch the bacon right here, you made some money. And then you get the lettuce, a bit of a drawdown in the morning. So obviously a lot of people are hoping. Remember, hope is the best strategy in the world because you're 100% correct. And that's the lettuce. Kind of a complicated lettuce because usually we want the lettuce to be green, but this is red. So that's why we call it complicated. And then the next, that's the tomato. So that's going to be equal to or greater than or less than, we don't know, uh, to the bacon. So that's projected. So if I take this candle and I move it right here, you can see that it should be equal to slightly a little bit aggressive. So maybe like that and then project it to the where the open is equal to the close of Friday's candle and that gives us around yeah 420 so that's a BLT setup into a TGIF and also Nvidia did trigger TGIF and then finally we got uh, MasterCard MasterCard is in an A6 and it, we did get earnings related positions, which means we're kind of IV protected. It means that the chances of it going to zero is very, very low, but still it's probable. Uh, and we, you can see that it's been trading in a range, right? You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that it's been trading sideways for a very long time. Once it starts to take off, it'll break through. It'll have to break through that high here back at 316 run into earnings and if I turn on the earnings indicator or it's not an indicator but it's just kind of giving you the schedule it's referencing time for you so here you can see that MasterCard it does it does look like it does have a decent run into earnings see so past performance is indicative of future performance so it does have this tendency to run if you look at the here it didn't so not not everything's a hundred percent but most of the time you do get a little bit of run into earnings this one was a nice run so it ran up from 237 all the way up to about just a ten dollar thirteen dollar move and that's what we're expecting for this one especially with an a6 so if you take a look at the ttm squeeze here you can see some red dots forming right so that's a period of low volatility. So it means the price has been trading relatively uh, within a range for, uh, for a period of time. And then it did have this red histogram that um, illustrated some heavy selling. However, the price did not reflect that because the price, well, I mean, if you're trading weekly, now, you're going to go worthless on a couple of these positions because you're trying to sell, you're trying to buy puts, but it's not, you get this nice big move up again, counter trend rally, and then it falls off. So it's a, it would have been a very difficult position to be buying puts and making profit on that. However, it's uh, you can see that because the price has been trading within a range and you get this uh, histogram here with some buying pressure, then you revert back to the lower waves. You can see that wave one the selling pressure has reduced because you can see that the histogram uh, position is reducing as well. Okay, so the gradient is still, uh, it's positive. It went from negative to positive, And now if it gets above the zero line on wave one, then it's uh, the buyers are in control. And then from a longer term perspective, because the look back period for wave two is a little longer than wave one, you can see that the, um, the overall wave has been above zero. So if it's above zero, it's really hard to 
use an indicator. Um, if an indicator tells you to short, you don't want to be shorting when wave two and three is above zero. Okay, you just kind of have to ignore it. You do want to be shorting it when it's under the the wave is like an undertow. So if the wave is under zero, then you are in, in a position that has a higher probability of making money on the puts. But if you're buying puts when wave two and three are above zero, the odds are greatly against you, especially when there's an earnings run just around the corner. So there has to be some really bad news. Um, you can see that the volatility has been quite huge because this candle right here was probably J Pow candle. Uh, it formed a very, very bearish engulfing candle, but it didn't, if you take a look at the actual move, it had a, uh, a short covering rally which was pretty brutal, after creating this massive bearish engulfing candle, uh, it, it rallied back up to a new, a higher, a higher high. And then it sold off. So the volatility is very, very high. However, uh, with this A6 behind it, um, I think the odds of moving higher uh, is in favor for MasterCard in uh, running into earnings, which is going to be released on July the 30th. So plenty of time and IV protected. So that's great. Okay, so um, in, that's, that's it for the market update. Uh, the general idea here is that the market will crash sometime in the future. Unfortunately, I'm not able to predict exactly when, but it will. And when it crashes, it will crash harder than before because in the second term for the incumbent presidency, if Donald Trump gets elected, the, um, the market becomes a lot more volatile, more volatile than you'll ever, ever believe. Usually the first, if you look up in history, every time a new president is voted in or elected, uh, the market usually runs really hard, long and hard, that's what she said, for the first year or two, okay? That is true for almost every single president. Okay. After the second term, so once they're elected in again, uh, things get a little bit tricky. So uh, be careful about, um, you know, about how you're positioning. There are some, some periods where you, you can take some aggressive positions, but the, the key point here is you gotta stay in the game as long as possible. Remember to manage your risk, and, and then if you, if you build enough profits, then there's some times where you can you know, take that, use those profits to go aggressive, but um, in the end, it's all about position sizing and managing your risk because the market's not going anywhere. Okay, so a little update for the micro futures. That course will be um, starting next week. So those who are interested in trading futures or actually I've optimized my, uh, I have this algorithm for futures accounts as well. Uh, that uh, I will start the first uh, course on futures. Uh, there will be Futures is a little bit different. It's a little bit, uh, it requires margin. But if anyone's interested, I have uh, a list of people who are interested. Uh, that will be the first introductory course uh, will be sometime next week. I'll email the people who are interested in it. The, there's two options. The one is just um, the course itself. And the other option is to take the course and real live trading. Uh, the whole point is to just make your money back on the course. For those who sign up for the retirement account, uh, you know, always keep me updated on what the what you're doing with your TradeStation account. Uh, there's some new upgrades to the overall server, so everyone is going to be able. Whoever signs up will have uh, a dedicated server with a dedicated access to um, their account but it's still in development and once it's done, I'll inform everybody so that they can access their account uh, whenever they feel like it. Right now, you're just gonna have to wait. Um, <clears throat> and then in the future, sometime this week, 
there will be a dedicated channel for those who have purchased the Tesla algorithm. Uh, that will be a community of traders who are specifically devoted to trading Tesla. And uh, some some interesting stats. Uh, one of the people, one of the one, some people, especially a female. I mean. Uh, has made quite a bit on the Tesla algorithm, probably up more than seventy, eighty thousand dollars. So congratulations to her and a couple other people. Um, the I'm looking very looking. I'm looking forward for August fourteenth. That's where I'll be um, positioning a bit aggressive. So uh, during this period where we're running into earnings, and then knowing that J Powell is coming out July. Uh, 29th, uh, please be careful for the week of July 29th. It is not um, starting July 29th, 30th, and 31st. Be extremely careful. Okay, I'm going to mention this every single day until that day happens. Trading around JPOW is very, very bad for your health, especially for, from my experience. So I would recommend going out, if it's a sunny day, going out and getting some beers getting fat and enjoying your day because that is not uh, a week that I, I plan on trading. I'm just going to turn off my computer, probably format my computer, and then reinstall Thinkorswim. And the uh, <coughs> there's a special offer for those who are interested in the Thinkorswim uh, S3XY algorithm. That's for the Tesla algorithm. Uh, so for anyone who's interested in, in uh, there, there are actually quite a few people who registered for a one-year one-year membership. Uh, for those who registered for a one-year membership, I'll be giving uh, the Tesla algorithm um, as a free uh, uh, as a free as a as a free indicator, no, free algorithm to those who who signed up for a one-year. So, if you signed up for a one-year uh, subscription to Toss Option. I will be giving uh, the Think the Thinkorswim version, mobile and desktop, of the S3XY Tesla algorithm for free. It's valued at one thousand two hundred dollars. I'll be giving away that for free. That's uh, part of the one year subscription uh, package. In terms of the uh, servers, we've updated the servers, so there's a load balancing routine. Uh, last week and a couple of weeks, due to the overwhelming demand and subscriptions, uh, we've been, a lot of Gold members and pre uh, Platinum members have been experiencing some disruption, even myself, trading blind without these algorithms uh, due to the overload. Um, and then what happened was the servers uh, started kicking out everyone because there was <laughs> the bandwidth was reached. Uh, believe it or not, I'm I'm using about 4.5 gigs per hour. <laughs> so they sent me a bill for about thousand five hundred dollars, fifteen thousand uh, dollars for running these. If if I were to use AWS, okay, so. You know, this is um, obviously I'm not paying that because I got you know special deals going on, but uh, I did implement a new uh, load balancing routine, regardless of whatever I'm paying to run run these servers and being able to stream it. Uh, I now understand that why it's very difficult to stream. Um, anyways, there's a new load balancing routine, so uh, you will not be kicked off. You should not be kicked off anymore. Uh, there are some small bugs, but they are being found and killed. I will debug them, and you should be experiencing a better streaming experience if you have access to WebView. Otherwise, you can continue using those Discord bots. And the again, just a friendly reminder, the uh, August calendar will be out 27th. And the Monte Carlo simulation that I've uh, processed has identified August 14th to be a very, very, uh, uh, is a setup to be for a very profitable uh, TJF um, going into uh, the 16th, 17th. So that's a very, so if, if you want to be, a, if you just want to step back and just take a look at 
how we're trading with our profits because we did we did make some pretty decent trades a lot in the past two weeks if you want to step back and you want to have the odds in your favor and you want to watch that's great you can learn through this stuff but uh, I've identified a high probability trade set up August 14th and obviously quad witching for Apple is another high probability but that's later down the road okay so that's it for now this recording is now one hour in duration um, I think I will be doing another uh, mini session on Tuesday on Fibonacci analysis there's gonna be uh, I'm gonna have to update that calendar but this session has been recorded thank you very much for your time uh, enjoy the rest of your day I'll be I'll be on voice tomorrow last week was pretty crazy in terms of how many people are contacting me I've never been contacted this many times I think I need to start uh, putting my phone on mute, but uh, I will be on voice tomorrow morning. All right. Thank you very much and have a great night.